what's going on at Sophie?
nails through a straw, the days in there with such a ball. And the one thing I've learned from this, if you want to use an angle scooter, break in and stay on the fucking computer.
Theatre was the real thing. Proper people standing tall, adored by those looking up from the stalls. You got there in your horse and car tour. And you enjoyed the experience, wore your top hats and tails or among the variants of the clothes of the day. Because everyone lived this way before they started tinkering, made transport with wings or at the very least engines, in a needless effort to improve things. Okay, so when you got small bugs or rickets or tuberculosis or neurosis or phlebitis or thrombosis, it was a bit inconvenient. But there was a plentiful supply of leeches if you could get to the apothecary. So there was no need for proper medicine. That foolish, impossible prof prophecy. Why did we ever change a thing? What good did it bring? My great granddad could have bought a house for a fiver and still had changed the furniture and fish and chips. But although it was clever, it didn't have two farthings to rub together. Slept in his uncle's coal hole and worked at the chimney at seven years old. He certainly didn't want change to take off. Fast forward to now. Our ancestors would be awestruck at how we live, the brilliance that humanity would give. But how have we used it? The earth is expiring because we have used it. So many children are starving or dying of preventable diseases. People still being killed through ruling class greed, endless wars and unspeakable deeds. But let's not change. There is no need. And the sentiments in that poem the confusion as to whether change is good or bad, match how okay confused I feel about where I stand. Am I funny or do people just use me? Can I ever be sure if they laugh with me or at me? I don't know what to make of it. Sometimes I think I'm winning, then my head is spinning back to darkness, with the face of rejection grinning through the gloom. I go from freedom to imprisonment to the new girl, like Prince Andrew searching for an alibi to keep me in the light. On my hip, I sweat. The certainty is swept away. My accusers are not kept at bay by clever lawyers buying time, clever lawyers buying silence. Then my head as reminders of my crime, the story of my life being useless and boring and anodyne and probably using too much rhyme and not scanning properly. But to paraphrase Winston Churchill, of 1941. Bombs the negativity that's about to be won. And at least I won't have to bomb the sheet and let it fucking rest of But we mentioned Prince Andrew there. Reminds you that I have to perform to the people, regardless of whether I actually sound like them. Most of the Andrews bother. And I learned the hard way, going overboard with the Queen's song, the short song. I wrote a whole show as a queen, taking a piece out of Philip. And then Philip got flea bowl for 99. And the whole show was as obsolete as a two-year-old wife over. So, flea bowl for 99 is an appropriate cricketing metaphor because his middle stop hadn't been on road since the week of the end of Margaret Thatcher. The queen often fantasised about doing common jobs and used to practise greyhound commentaries watching races with the same turn down on TV. Now, the Queen used to appear at my shows to earn a few multiples that rehabilitate Andrew go from me. But for obvious reasons, she can't do that now. So this is an impression. You probably won't be able to tell the difference. It's like she's in the room. <laughs> Honest. This is her commentary for one grey hand race. Thank you. 
they go not there, we take that peace. Brexit's fucking great for us. We won, you lost, suck it up. Amazon chops down the trees in it, but who cares, they delivered you not there, Boris was Prime Ministerial, Benny Hill stole my material. Too many foreigners in our cities. Four, fuck me, look at their titties. Geordie Shaw was great TV. Stick like a butterfly and float up like a bee. Climate change just isn't real. Greta Thunderbird is an imbecile. Maggie Thatcher was a kindly soul. Jeremy Corbyn, fucking arsehole. Johnny Foreman claimed oil. Just how on earth are we supposed to stop it? Deploy the forces, bish bash bash, then foreigners don't like each other. The Grand Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. It's just the way of things. Close the borders, fuck off Europe, and God save the king. Because you have to love a common people, revere someone poor and privileged. You probably wouldn't consider them good enough to be to the courts. Then of course, there's those wonderful elderly gammons who voted for Brexit. Every nostalgia for Empire and Steve Trains. I'm old and I'm lame and I'm riddled with pain. It's old for the top of the time, the biggest curse. I can't walk very far, I can't drive a car, and my piles are fit to burst. I don't see my grandkids and that's quite handy because they're always causing a ruckus. They've got no manners and will drive me bananas, the miserable bunch of fuckers. When I was there, that age, I was filled with rage and I went to work on the chimney. They don't know they're born, treat the old ones with scorn and have no respect for family. Yes, I voted for Brexit. They didn't expect it. Yeah, they fight for fuel and food. I fucked up their lives, so I shouldn't be surprised they are sullen and rude. If they think they'll get cash when I turn to ash, they're in for a massive surprise. With the cost of eating, my fortunes keep beating, because I foul for Tory lies. I've nothing to spare, but I pay for my care. My house is mine anymore. We took back control, but Boris the arsehole was a charlatan to the poor. Sorry, kids. <laughs> ah, yes, long Brexit. The result of a political system that left a pathological liar, serial adulterer, and father of an army of bastards in number 10 day entry. Because he promised us better shaped bananas and Farage's wet dream. Because at least he wasn't this, this cross, eh? <laughs> what we need is a new political party, a party of the people. And this is a party election broadcast. But the Turquoise Party. Good evening. The Turquoise Party is the new party set to the mould of British politics. Why vote for us? Well, unless you're very rich, none of the boring old parties have done anything for you recently, have they? Let's face it, the Tories suck cock. Labour are all the Tories. And the Lib Dems are in danger of being sucked because they are a bunch of cocks. Wishy-washy wannabes who could organise a fry up in a greasy spoon but have scattered beers and samples. Greens? Fuck off. That'll never win a majority. We in the turquoise party say it as it is in plain language that the common person can relate to. That is, the country is fucked. It's those assholes who fucked it. Or plan to fuck it. Or a metaphorical four-year-old burgundy to a nigga get a skin and fuck it. So what's the difference about us? Do we have the policies to stop out the parasitic twats who are bankrupt of ideas? You bet your sweaty balls we do. We're on your side. Our radical manifesto will make a difference to working poor, to the environment, and to wildlife. We won't fuck a man. We'll keep our pledges. These pledges include three Ivy's jackets for all hedgehogs, improvements to our road network, improvements to our road network, 
to include the ending of the barbarian views of cat's eyes in favour of a more ethical alternative in radioactive refugees. Making free Esperanto lessons available to all animals in order to encourage more harmonious relations between species. The setting up of events in which foxes are invited to hunt Jacob Rees Mogg and do their thing when they catch you. But we must all about the animals. We are a party of people. We propose an increase of one hand to the state mentioned. For every lie Boris Johnson ever told. We will give all disabled people a free Tesla with any modification to pay for by Elon Musk. This will give the old stroke something to motivate, to really motivate, made by the squad that is 44 billion dollars <laughs> off. Starbucks coffee will be available free on prescription to low income families until the company pays its fucking taxes. Similarly, vote for Sleeping on a bridge with his ear when he was 
the chilly towers. Forest and cross and snorting lines as he fathers bastards and spares his lies. MPs from the Gory Party go to work to get by on Charlie. But even in this strangest of times, we need to get tough on rhyme and tough on the cause of rhyme. So Simon Garfunkel's greatest hits would include the sound of violence. Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson, and bring over trouble water. Now, I don't know why water is trouble or even who he is, but it seems somewhat harsh to stick him under the bridge. We've had some wonderful movies, as if the original was needed improving. Like, The Hundred and One Damnations, a hell of a film, I'm sure you'll agree. Then the 39 Chefs, when Cruella decided the change of breed were just as well for Phil and Eve. And Neil Diamond, in the cheese slinger, is a real hot digger. I was ass-pounded by Josie and his amazing testicular dream boat. Well, they were that baby there. And in glorious bat-turds, a better flying mammal than met up the Osborne and trapped its old nerves. We would have criminal spice girls called Felony B and Felony C. Muse singing about a supermassive asshole, and that's not all. Kids were there, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. There would be a black country killer called the Boston Strangler, and Gordon Brown's a song by the Danglers. A bit of hard rock never hurt anyone, though this I doubt, one of your hair and your lights will be out. A bird in the hand is worth two on the bus, I can see. A friend in need is a fiend indeed. Liverpool fans singing, you'll never wank alone. <laughs> the butcher giving his dog a runner. You seem to be in Trump's erection and probably cause a nasty infection. And I heard Harry Potter's monopoly to fire every year to be up high. Emma, if you ever have to drink, you can't afford it, Squire. Now, I think this poem is for Dr. Morris. Well, those were born in Puffy Cup. But on one thing we can all agree, too many cups really do spoil the broth. And you could end up with cheesy bunion sandwiches and a packet of glittery sauce balls. Thank you.
Peter done doing it, uh, Jason. I was Jason doing it, yeah, I know Josephine was finding it too much, she was yeah. killing us. So yeah, check him out. Oh, so are you going to be at Crafty Oh, excellent. I'm sure I might actually make a rare Zoom appearance myself then. Okay. Who'd be high? 
survive the The world wants to see you. The world The guys got here tonight are like, not just friends, but people like Al, Acker Lane, Nick and Clive, Nick and Clive have the best room for them. They're like Batman and Robin, but honestly, I just, I just, I'm really trying to get what I think of you. And that's, work, that's part, part of my job is to, what I think is showcase. You know, I want the world to know you, jumping jewels. <laughs> but you know that, don't you? You know that I think the, literally, but not just being a great player, just being a great person. But don't worry, I don't fancy it yet. Well, I do, but I can't tell the wife. Yeah, next one. Yeah, I just want. I can't get nothing. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I love that. I'll go back tomorrow. I'll work this week. Track. One day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'